It's my fault. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in, Winning Cures Everything. It is the Wednesday, October 19th edition of the show. I am your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE, and we have got some games to break down. And let me go ahead and tell you, the show was brought to you each and every time out by BetUS. It is America's favorite sports book since 1994. They are wonderful. They are the premier online sports book. You can find them over at BetUS.com. Make sure that you go and get signed up over there Great stuff all around, fast payouts, all the good stuff. You know how this goes. Uh, so along with that, I host the BetUS College Football Show every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, and it's a good, good time. Make sure that you are subscribed over there. We hit 10,000 today. Very excited about that. I, here at Winning Cures Everything, am getting ever so close to 7,500. That is my goal, 7,500. So hit that subscribe button. There are a ton of you that watch these that are not subscribed. So if you would, please sign up into your YouTube account or your Google account, whatever it is, and make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. It's going to let you know when we go live, etc. Plenty of things to do. All right. Let's go on and get into it. There's no reason to wait around on this. We're going to start with it. We got 12 games. Uh, by the way, this is the college football against the spread pick them for week number eight. I pick eight under the excuse me. I pick twelve under the radar games that were not discussed on the Bet US show. Some of them are not always the under the radar games, right? It, like today, we're talking LSU and Ole Miss as well. So there are things that we will discuss on here that just were not hit on the Bet US show because we may not have found value there. The ones that I find the most value in, those are going to be over there. I'm twenty eight, fourteen, and two on the season with my best bets over at BetUS uh, on the BetUS College Football Show. So make sure that you check those out. The links will be in the description for those shows uh, so that you can get my best bets over there. On the season, in this spot, picking the games that I don't really have a feel on or a best bet on, I am 42 and 42 against the spread. Uh, you can also join in to the Winning Cures Everything Pick'em Contest. Uh, we do an Against the Spread College Football Picks Contest every single week. You can find that, of course, over at winningcureseverything.com. Click on the contest page, and it'll be right there. We also have a link in the description. That's the easiest way that you can get into it. So uh, let's go ahead and dive in. As I said, I went 5-7 and seven last week, 42-42 and 42 on the season in these. I'm going to let you know which way I lean on them, which way I would go. And, uh, and I put these up. On the website, you can find my picks and what picks I've made all season on winningcureseverything.com. There is a picks section. There's also a link in the description. You can click that as well. Easy to do. So let's go ahead and dive in. Let's knock this thing out. Uh, moving along, we are going to start Kansas at Baylor. Baylor is a 7.5 point favorite. Uh, the total is 58. It's 12 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. We're going to pull up the numbers and... Shockingly, I have got Kansas favored in this game. Now, my numbers are, uh, I'll tell you this, I trust my numbers. I really do. Uh, sometimes they look a little crazy, uh, but these are opponent adjusted and everything. So, just throwing that out there. We don't know if Blake Shapin is going to play in this game. Of course, he went out with a concussion last week, so that could end up being a, a pretty big deal. Uh, Kansas 9-1-1 one one against the spread in their last 11 conference games. They are 1-11 and 11 against the spread their last 12 against Baylor. That doesn't really tell us a whole lot because, to be honest, uh, they like Kansas doesn't have a good against the spread record against anybody in the Big 12 as it sits right now. Baylor 24-2, and two, uh, 20, 20 wins, 4 losses, and two pushes against the spread after a spread loss like they took at West Virginia last week. So that's something to say about that. They they are obviously coming off of a loss, so that's something to pay attention to. Um, looking at the numbers here, I mean, obviously Kansas's defense is bad. Uh, number 122 in PPA per drive defense, that's not good. There's lots of ways that Baylor's offense will be able to take advantage of them. Uh, running the ball will certainly be one, number 30 PPA per rush on offense for Baylor against number 111 PPA per rush on defense for Kansas. Uh, but the Kansas numbers have gotten a little bit better as we've gone through the season. Obviously, Oklahoma took 
big-time advantage of them last week. But I don't think that Baylor has quite the talent that Oklahoma had last week. You look at Kansas's numbers, yeah, there's ways that they can take advantage of Baylor as well. Jason Bean continues to play really, really well uh, in a starting role here. And, you know, number four in, uh, let's see, number four in PPA per pass against Baylor, number 82. Like, they just don't have a great secondary here. Uh, Kansas, not great at explosive passing, but, you know, they wouldn't be able to do it against Baylor anyway. Uh, Success rate, number 29, passing the ball for Kansas, number 91 for Baylor secondary here. Uh, You look at passing downs rate, passing downs PPA, et cetera, that all leans Kansas. As far as running the football, Kansas, they do that more often. Obviously, their their rush rate is 56.3%. Um, they, they're they not going to have a ton of luck against Baylor's uh, defensive line here. But, like, I, they might still be able to get something done. So, the biggest thing is you're going to have to run the ball some, but they're still really, really efficient throwing the football, even if they only do it 43% of the time. I think that in this spot, looking at field position, looking at everything, I mean, it, it, Kansas has just a ton of leans in this game. They are better as far as giveaways per game, number 22. Uh, Baylor is number 76 in giveaways per game. Baylor doesn't do a good job of taking the ball away. Uh, I mean, points per play margin, PPA margin, uh, everything. Like While Kansas does have a not good defense, there are certainly things that Kansas can take advantage of on offense. I'm going to ride Kansas plus the 7.5. Like, I think this is a pretty good team. Uh, on Even on the road, like, this is a spot where, you know, it, they they need to try and find a win here pretty soon because this schedule gets pretty difficult, and they still need that one win to get bowl eligible. So this is a spot where they could absolutely do it. Uh, like like you saw, my numbers like Kansas outright. Yeah, I'll ride Kansas plus 7.5. Absolutely. Why not? All right, moving right along, Cincinnati at SMU. Uh, SMU is a 3.5-point home dog the total sits at 58 and a half. It's another 12 p.m. Eastern time game. This one's on ESPN. Let's go ahead and pull up the numbers. Uh, my number's like Cincinnati minus 3.74. So it is literally right on the number right there. I mean, just crazy. Uh, the strength of schedule for Cincinnati doesn't look great. SMU has been through a gauntlet. Uh, but truth be told, SMU is 0-5 against the spread in their last five games. Like, they have not looked good. They are 0-4 against the spread in the last four at home. Um, for Cincinnati, Ben Bryant... Concussion confirmed from Luke Fickle. Uh, so he's day to day. Not sure, you know, it pretty may end up playing on that one. Uh, as far as Cincinnati, I mean, 0 3 and 1 against the spread in their last four games. Um, on the road, excuse me, Cincinnati is 4 and 1 against the spread in their last five against SMU. You know, I, I start looking at these numbers, and while the SMU offense is really good, uh, that Cincinnati defense is a beast. Like, that is something they're not going to be able to take advantage of some of the same passing explosiveness, et cetera, that they did against Navy last week. While Cincy is not great in passing explosiveness, they are number nine in passing success rate. They are number 16 in PPA per pass. Uh, and then you start looking at things like points per scoring opportunity. And there's not a, a massive advantage for SMU in this spot. There is a massive advantage for Cincinnati's offense. Uh, they're not great at running the football. But even if you're not great at running the football, you do have a really good offensive line. They're number 19 in offensive line yards, number 9 in stuff rate. SMU is terrible on defense. Their front seven is really, really bad against the run, so that is something to pay attention to. Standard downs PPA, Cincy number 49, uh, SMU is number 96, so Cincy should be able to stay ahead of the chains here. Um, As far as, you know, if if Cincy were to get into passing downs, you know, third and long, et cetera, if they they get behind the chains – they're number 41 in passing downs PPA. So they're pretty successful in that spot. I I look at this, I think Cincinnati. I hate the hook here, but I'll probably ride with Cincinnati on this. Uh, you look at, you know, turnover margin, penalties per game, et cetera. SMU certainly has a lean in penalties per game. They are incredibly disciplined. Cincinnati, though, a lot of theirs can sometimes just be from aggression. And when you are an aggressive defense, yeah, you're going to get penalties called on you, but it can absolutely work in your favor. So this is one of those spots where even though the fundamentals don't point that direction, uh, I'm going to lean Cincinnati. I think they've got more talent. I think they are, uh, I think they're just an overall better football team. So yeah, 
yeah, give me the Bearcats to cover three and a half on the road at SMU, even if Ben Bryant does not play. I think they are still the better football team. Uh, moving ahead from there, Duke at Miami. And Miami, what a weird, weird team. Uh, this is at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. It's on ESPN3 or one of the regional sports networks. Uh, Miami just, they've not been great this year. We'll, we'll just, we'll put that out there. Uh, Miami is favored by nine. The total is 58 on this. Uh, let's go on and pull up on the screen what the stats show on this. Uh, my numbers have Miami favored by 13.26 in it. Duke is 13, excuse me, Duke is 3 and 14 against the spread in their last 17 on the road. They are 2 and 6 against the spread in their last 8 against Miami. Um, Miami is 0 and 5 against the spread in their last 5 ball games, so that is certainly something to pay attention to. Uh, they're 4 and 11 against the spread in their last 15 at home. So the number sometimes gets a little bit inflated when it comes to Miami. Uh, but I don't necessarily think it is in this spot. This Duke defense is not good against the pass. And don't get me wrong, Miami is number 80 in PPA per pass. Duke is number 112 in that on defense. Um, When you look at passing success rate, Miami is number 35. Uh, Havoc rate allowed, like Miami is not going to let Duke get any havoc in this, I don't believe. I, I tend to think that Miami just has, one, much more talent, and two, uh, their defense is going to be able to slow down that Duke offense. Uh, you you look at what Duke does best; it is run the football. Number twelve in PPA per run. Miami's defense is number three in that spot. That defensive line for Miami pretty good. Those linebackers definitely know how to tackle. Uh, turnover margin certainly leans Duke's way. That team is really disciplined. Only They're number three in giveaways per game, so they are really, really good there. Uh, penalties per game, that certainly leans towards Duke as well. They're number 58. Miami is number 109. There are different things about Miami with that talent that they will be able to take advantage of Duke here. Uh, scoring opportunities per game, they'll be able to take advantage there. Uh, they're number 15, and Duke's defense is number 36. You look on the other side, uh, scoring opportunities per game for Miami uh, defense is number 20, and for Duke's offense is number 47. Uh, when you get down to points per scoring opportunity, so finishing drives, Duke is number 91, 3.64 points per drive there. Uh, Miami is number 18 in that metric on defense. So Miami, good at getting stops. Uh, you start looking at standard downs rate. You start looking at uh, passing downs rate, etc. There's a lot of things that lean at Miami here, and I'm going to ride... With that, I like Miami to cover the nine at home, get off this slide that they have been on. I like this team quite a bit this week. Uh, Duke put everything they had into that North Carolina game last week. Now you got to go on the road against a team that is trying to to get better, trying to figure out a way to win with Tyler Van Dyke, etc. I think they're going to this week. I think that they cover. All right, let's hit on game number four here. Memphis at Tulane. And Tulane, a seven-point favorite over at BetUS. The total sits at 56 and a half. Uh, let me write down the time here. 3.30 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. Let's go on and pull up the stats, of course. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the screen yourself. You'll see what's up. Uh, this is a fun matchup. Um, Tulane is 5-0 and against the spread. Their last five against the American Athletic Conference. They are 8-1 and against the spread in their last nine games overall. Willie Fritz has got this team playing really, really well, especially on defense. Uh, Memphis 2-5 and against the spread in their last seven against Tulane. They are 7-15 and in their last 22 AAC games. That's against the number, of course. They are 3-11 and against the spread in their last 14 road games. So that is certainly not good for the Memphis Tigers. Uh, but looking at this, the line is 7. I have got it. Tulane minus 4.68. So a couple of points of value here. Uh, You start breaking down exactly what it is that would keep this game close. And the big part of this is the Memphis offense, which has kind of tailed off in recent weeks, even with them putting up 40-some-odd points in a loss at East Carolina. Uh, Their their big thing is that they throw the ball 51.37% of the time. That's number 60 in the country. They try and run it. Quite a bit. Number 71 there, they are 48.21% running rate. Uh, They're not going to have a ton of success doing that against Tulane's defense. Tulane's defense is number 13 in PPA per rush, number 25 in rushing success rate allowed. 
and they are number 19 in uh, excuse me rushing explosiveness allowed. So Memphis is not going to be able to take advantage of those uh, really quick explosive plays, uh, even passing the ball. Tulane's passing defense, number 11 in explosiveness allowed. So this Tulane defense is really, really good. Uh, Memphis does a good job not turning the ball over. They are number 13 in uh, turnover margin, number 21 in penalties per game. Uh, But Tulane a little bit better as far as penalties per game at number 9. The Tulane offense is the biggest thing. Looks like uh, Michael Pratt is going to play this week for them. So uh, coming back from injury, that is certainly a big thing. Uh, Their PPA per pass, it's not great for Tulane, but it's okay. They don't do it a ton. 48% of the time they pass the ball. Uh, but they're number 60 in PPA per pass, number 82 in passing success rate. That Memphis defense is putrid against the pass. So with you know Pratt coming back, that should be something that they can take advantage of against Memphis. I Even with the number saying that I should lean Memphis here, I'm still going to ride with Tulane to cover the seven. Uh, too many trends point that direction. Tulane is a really, really good team, especially at home. I will, I will take Memphis... Uh, excuse me, I will take Tulane to cover the seven on that one. All right, let's let's uh, let's knock out some ads. On the other side, we have got Ole Miss at LSU. Let's check out some things you should know about. College football is back, and BetUS TV has you covered. Every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, we've got expert game analysis to help you make informed decisions before kickoff, only on the BetUS TV College Football Channel. Visit winningcureseverything.com to find everything you need to know about us, including full shows in video or podcast form, gambling picks, merch, the gear we use, and more. If you want more content from me, Gary, visit betustv.com. I host the How to Gamble on Sports show and, from August through January, the BetUS College Football Show. You can subscribe to both on YouTube. If you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or whatever's your favorite podcast app. And if your app allows it, leave a five-star written review. Visit the Winning Cures Everything web store to get all kinds of football shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and more. Visit winningcureseverything.com slash store to see what all we've added. And now, back to the show. All right, back at it. We have got Ole Miss heading to Baton Rouge. Uh, you know what? Before we do that, before we do that, let me tell you about Valtimary Surf Company. They are a clothing line, and they have got some of the most awesome shirts. Uh, it is basically college towns with a design done up for a surf company, like the Beach Life for that college town. And it doesn't matter if your town is on a beach or not. I've got the Tuscaloosa Surf Company shirts. They are comfortable. The fabric is fantastic. You can find out more over at valtamarysurfco.com. There's a link in the description. And you can click that and use the promo code GARY10. That's G-A-R-Y-10. You get 10% off your order. I'm telling you, you're going to love these shirts. I love them. I wear them frequently. Go and check it out. valtamarysurfco.com. And then use the promo code Gary10. All right. Ole Miss at LSU in Baton Rouge. Yeah, I'm excited about this one. I am so excited about this. LSU is a two and a half point favorite as it sits currently. Total is 67 and a half over at Bet US, 3 30 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS. And let's pull up the numbers. This thing opened around a pick'em, maybe Ole Miss by one, LSU by one, whatever it was. My number's right on it. Ole Miss minus .57 points. So no real lean here. Uh, The fact that it's out to LSU minus 2.5, that would say that I would need to take Ole Miss here. I don't know that I'm going to do that. Uh, Ole Miss strength of schedule is number 111 in the country. Uh, LSU number 30. You start looking at some of these numbers here, and certainly it, it points towards... Uh, both of these teams just being pretty good. The LSU defense, not great, uh, but they're they're decent enough. They're number 42 in stuff rate. Ole Miss is number 69 in stuff rate. Here's what Ole Miss does, though. Ole Miss runs more on the outside. They hit the perimeter. So even if you are good at defensive line, uh, defensive tackle, etc., they're not going to do a lot of running between the tackles. 
They find ways to get to the outside and use their speed with Judkins and uh, Zach Evans and whatnot, and and even Jackson Dart, to be completely honest. Uh, offensive line yards allowed, LSU is number 32. Uh, Ole Miss is number 28. And the issue here, number 72 PPA per rush for LSU's defense versus number 7 for Ole Miss's offense. Ole Miss could certainly find a way to take advantage of them here. Um, I, I don't... I don't know how much I love the matchup because I've seen Ole Miss not be able to run in certain spots, right? That's what's crazy is in some cases, they're just not able to get a lot done. Uh, You look at LSU's offense. They're number eight in PPA per rush, and Ole Miss is number 29. Now, and that's Ole Miss's defense. Uh, Rushing success rate, LSU is better their offense versus Ole Miss's defense. The offensive line yards and the stuff rate. LSU is a team that can run between the tackles. Now, a lot of their stuff gets done with Jaden Daniels, uh, you know, scampering around, finding ways to uh, to move the football. Uh, they're number 13 in rushing explosiveness. They are number 15 in offensive line yards. They're number 34 in stuff rate allowed. Uh, Ole Miss's defense can't really keep up with any of that. So I think you're going to see a ton of, well, one, running the football. But I think you're going to see some long drives from both of these teams because I don't believe that either of them is going to be super explosive here. Uh, Ole Miss likes to be explosive on the ground. Well, LSU's defense is number 53 in that metric. Uh, They're not, you know, they don't allow it. Uh, As far as field position, that certainly leans Ole Miss's way here. I don't know if that has to do with the strength of schedule or if it is just the special teams blunders by LSU. Uh, Turnover margin. I mean, equal. Both are number 63 here. Uh, LSU does a better job of not giving the ball up, but Ole Miss does a better job of taking the ball away. So that's one thing. Uh, Ole Miss better as far as penalties per game. LSU is number 76, and Ole Miss number 38. Uh, When it comes down to it, I think home field is going to matter. By the time this game is done, it will be Saturday night in Death Valley. I'm going to take LSU to cover the 2.5 and and end Ole Miss's unbeaten streak. Um, I think... I just think that this is one of those games where LSU's home field really helps them out. I mean, we saw it against Mississippi State. I think we'll probably see it here as well. Uh, This this is a prime spot for LSU to be able to pick off uh, Ole Miss here. So so give me me them Tigers to cover two and a half, not too shabby. Moving along, we are moving to the Big Ten. Purdue at Wisconsin. And Wisconsin is a two-point favorite fresh off of a loss at Michigan State. Uh, Purdue just keeps finding ways to get it done. This is a 3.30 p.m. Eastern time kick on ESPN. Purdue is 3-12 and 12 against the spread in their last 15 against Wisconsin. Um, yeah, I the road team, by the way, is 7-0 and 0 against the spread in the last seven in this matchup. This ain't the same Wisconsin team that we are used to. Uh, going to pull it up on the screen so that you can see exactly what it is that you're looking at. I've got Purdue favored by, well, <laughs> 6. 6.66 points. Uh, yes, that's actually what the number says there, yes. Uh, Wisconsin 0-5 against the spread of their last five against winning teams. Uh, Wisconsin's 3-7 and against the spread in their last 10 overall. I look at this, and there are absolutely ways that I can find for Purdue to take advantage here. Purdue is really good against the run. And while we're sitting there looking at Wisconsin's pass PPA at number 21 on offense, do you really trust Graham Mertz? Like, do you really trust them? I I don't think that I do. Uh, Their pass rate is number 117, so they only throw the ball 40% of the time. If they're going to run the ball at nearly 60%, yeah. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna look at that a little a little weird. Uh, PPA per rush, number forty nine on offense for Wisconsin. Purdue is fantastic at stopping the run. They are number sixteen in that metric. They defend what Wisconsin loves to do, so that is certainly something to pay attention to. When you get over to offense, yeah, Jim Leonard's defense is really really good. Uh, they're especially good against the rush. Their front seven is good at, at stopping that. They are not as good when it comes to stopping the pass. And Aiden O'Connell can carve them up. Purdue is number 39 in PPA per pass on offense. Wisconsin's defense is number 51. That's not what I want to pay attention to the most. 
passing success rate. Number 60 for Purdue, number 78 for Wisconsin. I think that Purdue on offense can find ways to take advantage of this Wisconsin defense. So I, I really like Purdue in this spot. Uh, I know that the trends say don't take them. I mean, they're 3-12 and 12 against the spread in the last 15 against this team. But this is not the same Wisconsin team that we have seen. Uh, you look at turnover margin, you look at penalties per game, etc. It's kind of a wash on both sides. Uh, the, both of these teams really bad at, at giveaways per game. Wisconsin is a little bit better at takeaways. Um, you look at penalties per game, yeah, that kind of leans uh, towards Purdue. But you start looking at penalty yardage per game, and this thing is basically dead even. So no real fundamental advantage for either of these teams. Uh, Wisconsin does like to go slow on offense. They're number 114 in plays per game. Uh, Purdue is number 8. So Purdue wants to go fast. If they can find a way to draw Wisconsin into a game that they don't want to play, more mistakes can be made. Uh, Yeah, wrap it up. I will take Purdue to cover the two in Madison. Boy, that sounds weird. Boy, that sounds weird, doesn't it? Uh, Could you imagine... Wisconsin losing to both Illinois and Purdue in Madison. It feels like I should take Wisconsin here. I'm, I'm going to ride Purdue. I'm going to trust my numbers. I'm going to trust what I'm seeing from these two teams. Uh, it makes all the sense in the world. So, give me Purdue plus the two. Vanderbilt at Missouri. Huh. Missouri is a 14-point favorite here uh, at home. And this is a strange... Strange situation here. It's 4 p.m. Eastern time on the SEC Network. We've seen Missouri do some pretty awesome things, right? This team looks really, really good. Um, you know, let's go on through the trends. I'm going to pull up the uh, the stats on the page here. The home team is 5-2 and two against the spread in the last seven in this series. Now, Missouri, obviously the home team. That helps. Vanderbilt, however... 10 and 4 against the spread in their last 14 road games. Uh, Missouri is 6 and 1 against the spread in their last 7 SEC games, and Missouri is 8 and 3 against the number in their last 11 games overall. So this is a this is a spot where you could certainly see yourself going with Missouri, oh they've got more talent and oh they this and that da 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 da. da. Uh, both of them have played super Super tough strength of schedules. Vanderbilt played Alabama and Georgia and Ole Miss. Uh, Missouri has played Georgia and Kansas State. Uh, You look at those numbers, and it ain't good, right? Green is good on my page. Red is bad. You start diving into what's going on here, and I'm sure you see right there in the middle of the page, I've got Vanderbilt actually favored in this game. I mean, we're talking like 19 points of value. Typically, I see something like that, and I go, "Mm, you know what, something's weird. Uh, We need to work with the formulas. We need to see what's going on. But that's happened multiple times this year, and it turned out my numbers were right. So there's a lot of people that are on Missouri right now. You start pulling up uh, some of the actual numbers as far as people betting, and there's not a lot of people betting on Vanderbilt. They all think, oh, this is a short number, et cetera. Look, I I think that Missouri's offense is bad enough that Vanderbilt will be able to hang around in this game. Missouri is number 106 in giveaways per game. Uh, Vandy is number 22. Vandy doesn't turn the football over. Missouri does. That's certainly something that could play in. Penalties per game. Missouri number 104. Vanderbilt number 19. Again, Leans towards Clark Lee's bunch. Uh, Eli Drinkwitz is a great, great football coach as far as his mind goes. But Missouri does not have an overwhelming talent advantage over Vanderbilt right now. They just don't. The Missouri defense is really, really good, right? And the pass is what Vanderbilt really likes to do. Uh, They don't do it as much as they run. But A.J. Swan is pretty fantastic throwing the football. Uh, They're number 58 in PPA per pass. But you, you see all this green on the side here for Missouri. Number 23 PPA per pass defense. Number 38 pass rate. Number 20 uh, passing success rate allowed. Uh, they're number 11 in havoc rate on defense. They are number 11 in passing downs PPA, etc. Uh, I still think as bad as their 
offense is. Their offense is not able to take advantage of Vanderbilt's defense the way that some of the better teams on the schedule have. I think Vanderbilt keeps it within the 14. I don't know that they win the game outright. Obviously, this is a 14-point underdog. That would be absurd. But my numbers like Vandy a lot. So go ahead and give me the Commodores. Give me the fight in Barton Simmons here. I like Vandy plus the 14 to cover against Missouri. Uh, I just think the number's wrong. I think a lot of people looking at this thinking, mm, yeah, Missouri's way, way better. Like, and, and, and maybe they are, right? These are obviously the games that I did not like as much to give out as an official play. But, uh, but we'll see. We will see with that. All right, moving right along, we've got Arizona State. <laughs> headed to Stanford, headed to Palo Alto, and Stanford a two and a half point favorite total of fifty four over at BetUS. This one is a four p.m. Eastern time game on the Pac twelve network, and you know this is a this looks like a fun matchup. Two teams that really need a win. Both of them have had good things happen here recently. Of course, uh, Arizona State got that big win over Washington. Stanford big win over Notre Dame just a week ago. Uh, you start pulling up the trends here. Let's uh, let's go and pull it up on the screen. Let you look at the actual numbers where I have Arizona State actually favored in the game. Um, Arizona State two and six against the spread in their last eight in Palo Alto. Arizona State one and four against the spread in their last five on the road. However, Stanford two and eleven against the spread in the last thirteen overall. They are one and six against the spread in their last seven home games. So these are two teams that are not able to cover anything. So why on earth would anybody want to bet? This game, I don't know. I really don't know. You look at Stanford's offense, uh, look, I, I like what, what they're doing on offense. They're able to throw the football, 53 in PPA per pass against Arizona State, number 80 in PPA per pass defense. You look at passing success rate, Stanford number 64, Arizona State number 120. Uh, Arizona State pretty good at stopping the explosive passes, but that's mainly because teams can just drive it all the way down the field on them, uh, which you can find when you look at like scoring opportunities per game. Uh, they're, they're giving up 4.83 is Arizona State's defense. That is number 115 in the country. Uh, they're giving up over five points per scoring opportunity. And a scoring opportunity, by the way, if, if you don't know, that is a drive that gets inside the opponent's 40-yard line. So if, if you're giving up dead last in FBS points per scoring opportunity, that means when somebody drives on you, you can't do nothing about it. Uh, you look at at Stanford; they're number twenty five in points per scoring opportunity, and they're and still even at number twenty five in all of FBS, they still are only four point six seven points per scoring opportunity. And Arizona State gives up more than that. Like that is something to pay attention to, big time, a big time on this. Uh, you look at Stanford's defense; yeah, it's pretty bad, but they're actually pretty good against the pass. So that is the strength of Arizona State's offense. Arizona State cannot run the football, which works because Stanford can't stop the run, but they can stop the pass. So that is certainly an advantage in Stanford's direction. Uh, you look at scoring opportunities per game. You look at points per scoring opportunity. Uh, Arizona State does finish drives on offense. They just can't stop them on defense. Um, Stanford, not great. Number 89 points per scoring opportunity on defense here. This looks like it could be a really, really weird game. Stanford number seven in penalties per game. Arizona State is number 120, so a pretty undisciplined football team. Uh, turnover margin, Stanford is terrible. Terrible, number 119. Arizona State, though, is number 88. How much of an advantage is that? I mean, it's kind of negligible. Um, I, I think, when I look at this, I think Stanford at home. I think David Shaw starting to figure some things out. I like the quarterback better. Even though the number says for me to take Arizona State, I'm going to ride with Stanford to cover two and a half here. Um, pretty important. Pretty important. I will say that. All right. Let's, uh, let's hit one more thing, and we'll be back on the other side with Boise State at Air Force. Let's check out some things you should know about. Follow the show on Twitter at Winning Cures, and you can follow Gary at Gary WCE. You can also follow on Facebook. Got your own podcast or web show? Looking to start one? Or you're just curious how we look and sound so good? 
Well, we've got all the gear that we use listed on our gear page on the website. If you order using our links, you'll be supporting the show too. Subscribe on YouTube to get not only full Winning Cures Everything shows, but individual segments and other goodies as well. We're over 6,000 subscribers, and our goal by the end of the year is 7,500. If you're interested in advertising on a show that reaches over 80,000 unique football fans per month during the season, send an email to Gary at winningcureseverything.com, and we'll put together a plan that best fits you or your business. And now, back to the show. All right. Boise State at Air Force. Uh, before we do that, let me remind everybody, go enter in the picks competition, the picks contest. Each week, go over to winningcureseverything.com, click on contest right there, or to make your life even easier, I've got it right in the description of this show. So go and enter in that picks competition. It's free. The winner gets a $25 Amazon gift card every single week. Make sure that you go and enter in on that thing. All right, moving along. Boise State at Air Force. Air Force has been disappointing to me. I will tell you that. Let's go and pull it up on the screen. And Boise State, uh, excuse me, Air Force is favored by three at home. The total sits at 47.5, 7 p.m. Eastern time on CBS Sports Network. Uh, Boise, three, one, and one against the spread in the last five against Air Force. Boise, however, 0 3 and one against the spread in their last four road games. They do not play well on the road under Andy Avalos for whatever reason. Now, maybe that's changed. Because they have brought in Dirk Cutter as the offensive coordinator. He was an analyst. They fired the old OC in the middle of the season. And now Green is going to be playing quarterback. Hank Bachmeyer decided to transfer all this mess. Air Force 8-3 and three against the spread in their last 11 games overall. And they are 22-8 and eight against the spread after a straight-up win of 20-plus points. Last week, I believe they won 42-7 to seven over UNLV. UNLV dealing with a bunch of injuries, etc. I don't know exactly what that says about either team here. But regardless, my number says Boise State should be favored by two and a half points here. Um, I don't know that I necessarily agree with that, but I do look at this. Boise State's offense, uh, excuse me, their defense, is set up to be able to compete with Air Force. It's not like Air Force is going to be able to run over them. Uh, Air Force runs the ball 84% of the time. And it, look, teams run on Boise frequently, 56% of the time, it looks like, 57%. Um, still, the Boise State defense has been really, really good. Like, they are able to slow down what it is that Air Force really wants to do. Uh, Air Force number 10 in PPA per rush, Boise number 35 in PPA per rush defense. Uh, rushing success rate, Air Force is number 7. Uh, Boise State is number 20 in that spot. So, it, it really, this is kind of a wash when it comes down to it. You look at average field position, that that's a ding in favor of Boise. Scoring opportunities per game, Air Force only gets about 4.14. That's number 119 in the country. Yeah, Boise doesn't let people get inside the 40. They're, they're number 33 in that metric. Uh, once you get down there, yeah, Air Force is able to finish drives. I mean, they're number 24 in points per scoring opportunity. But I look at this, and I, I this looks kind of like a wash. I think that Boise defense is going to be able to slow down Air Force at least a little bit here. When you move over to the other side, the Boise offense is not good, but they have improved the running game ever since Green took over at quarterback. They are running the ball a lot more, over 53% of the time, almost 54% of the time. Uh, you look at rushing success rate, yeah, they're all the way up to number 60 now. They were terrible to start off the year, just really bad. PPA per rush is up to number 64. I think that this team, now first off, both of these teams, you might want to look at an under for this, even at 47 and a half, uh, because both of them play slow. Uh, Boise is number 93 in offensive plays per game. Uh, Air Force is number 72 in offensive plays per game. So both of them don't run a ton of plays on offense. I will say that. Uh, you look at what Boise wants to do on offense. Like they're, they're getting better at points per scoring opportunity. Uh, the other part of this is that uh, Air Force, they, they can't stop drives. Uh, they're number 114 in points per scoring opportunity. If you get down inside the 40, you are going to score on that defense. Just a period. Um, and now they don't give you a ton of opportunities. But once you get down there, yeah, you can score. You can score on them. I, I'm looking at penalties per game. Uh, Air Force number two, obviously you knew that team was going to be super disciplined. Um, and then I look at Boise and they're number 35. Turnover margin? Yeah, Boise certainly had issues 
beforehand, but they appear to have cleaned him up a little bit, so the number is actually improving as we go along through the season. So that's something to pay attention to. Uh, I want Air Force to win because I have an over eight and a half ticket on this team. I I think I'm going to take Boise to cover the three here. I think this thing is going to be super tight. My number says that's over like that's five and a half points of value. Yeah, I'm going to take Boise in this spot. Uh, they have shown in the past that they were pretty good at this. Uh, you give Andy Avalos enough time to be able to look at this Air Force offense. Yeah, he's going to know what to do with it. So, yeah, I will. I will ride with the Broncos. Give me Boise State to cover the three at Air Force. Moving along, we are already at 40 minutes on this. I can't go slow. I just can't. There's so much to uh, to break down. Minnesota at Penn State. This is a big one on ABC, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ABC. It is the whiteout game for Penn State. And as it currently sits, we do not know. That's not what I wanted to pull up. There it is. Uh... We do not know if Sean Clifford is going to play. We do not know if uh, Tanner Morgan is going to play. Um, I think the biggest question in this game is, can Penn State replicate what Illinois' defense had planned for Minnesota's offense? I mean, they completely shut them down. Uh, the favorite in this matchup is 3-1-2 and two against the spread in the last six games. So it is just right on, just right on the number. Every single time, it feels like. Uh, this line is actually coming down a little bit. It's down to Penn State, minus four. Total of 44.5, of course, over at BetUS. Minnesota, eight and two against the spread in their last 10 road games. Penn State just absolutely got walloped last week by Michigan. Um, six, 20, and two against the spread in their last 28 after a straight up loss. But. This team is 4-0-1 against the spread after allowing 40-plus points. Well, last week, 41-17, to that means 40-plus for Michigan last week, uh, which means that that Penn State trend, mm, we'll see. My number has it Penn State minus one, basically one and a half, 1.42. I'm not sure that you can really bet on this. Uh, if you're going with backup quarterbacks, I think Drew Alar, the backup for Penn State, is probably better than what Minnesota put out there. But, I mean, it could be wrong. We haven't seen it. We've got a very small sample size of uh, both of these teams here. Um, you look at this situation here. Um, da, 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 da. We're looking at Penn State strength of record number seven, Minnesota number 36. Both of them have played horrid strength of schedules. Uh, anytime they have gone up against good teams, like in actual good teams, they have uh, run into problems. We'll say that. Penn State had their first real test of the year, and yes, I understand Purdue was a test. They were able to pass that one because of matchups, right, and just overwhelming them as far as talent goes. Uh, but it's not like Purdue didn't slow them down. It's not like Purdue didn't stop them. You look at Minnesota's defense, obviously the numbers are still good, but they don't look as good as they did earlier. I mean, this whole thing was green before that. Um, you look at the offense, the offense numbers still good. Still good. Uh, rushing explosiveness, definitely down, especially since Mo Ibrahim uh, missed that game against... Uh, I've already forgotten who, who we missed the game against. Uh, not Illinois. They played Illinois last week. I don't remember. Regardless, it doesn't matter because... Oh, it was against Purdue. There you go. Um, I tend to lean Penn State here because of the wideout. I don't care who the quarterback is. I think they're going to be much more hyped for this. I think the fans are going to be hyped. Uh, it is tough to get everybody excited when you just got your brains beat in by Michigan. However... If you were ever going to do it, it would be for the whiteout game against a team like Minnesota, who you know that you can beat them. Turnover margin certainly leans towards Penn State. Uh, you look at penalties per game, that leans towards Minnesota. So maybe we've got a wash as far as the fundamentals go. But I think Penn State's defense is better than Minnesota's defense. And even though Penn State's offense is not as good as Minnesota's offense, I think Penn State can replicate a little bit on defense what Illinois was able to do against them. I don't have to do a full breakdown on this because, my gosh, we don't even know who the quarterbacks are going to be. Uh, there's going to be people out, et cetera. It's, it's weird, right? This is weird. I'm going to take Penn State. 
I'm going to take Penn State to cover the four. Uh, I think that the wideout night game at home certainly adds a bunch of value that you cannot properly put into a spreadsheet. So we'll make this easy. Give me Penn State to cover the four. I like it. Next up, we've got two more games, by the way. UCF at East Carolina. And this one, East Carolina is a five-point dog at home. The total sits at 64.5. Of course, latest numbers at BetUS. Let's go and pull it up on the screen. This is a 7.30 p.m. Eastern time game on ESPNU. And like I said, uh, UCF favored by five. My number has them by 9.28. Uh, the road team is six and two against the spread in the last eight meetings between these two. UCF is eight and eighteen in their last twenty-six American Conference games. It's not good, but East Carolina one and five against the spread in their last six against the AAC. So uh, it is what it is when it comes down to it. Uh, I look at this and I see a mismatch. One as far as talent goes, uh, number thirty-seven roster strength for UCF, number sixty-one for East Carolina. Uh, I look at this defense. And there's a lot that I like about UCF here. Um, ECU wants to pass the football. They're number 38 in pass rate in the country. Um, UCF does not have to defend it all that much. Uh, They're number 81 in pass rate defended. So that's something to look at. Uh, East Carolina, number 23 in passing success rate. UCF is number 65 in that metric. Now, when you go over to running the football, which Mike Houston still believes that you have to run the football some, right? He's not throwing the ball 65, 70% of the time. He is, uh, he's running the ball at 45% clip, right? You look at that, and they're number 37 in PPA per rush. UCF's defense is number 26. As far as rushing success rate is concerned, number 71 for ECU on offense, and UCF's rushing defense is number five. They've got a stout defensive line. You look at stuff rate, UCF's defense number five, ECU, their offensive line number 123. UCF will live in that backfield. They absolutely will. Uh, have a great, something else to pay attention to as far as the passing game is concerned. ECU's offense number 122 in that metric. UCF's defense is number 18. You move it over to the offense. No, you don't have to worry too much about passing the football. ECU's uh, defense is pretty good at stopping the run. Teams don't try and run it on them a bunch because they are pretty good on the defensive line. However, this is a spot where UCF will find ways to get to the perimeter. We talked about this with uh, Ole Miss and what they like to do. Yeah, UCF has got a bunch of speed, and they're going to try and get to the outside. So all these numbers about stuff rate, etc., on this side uh, don't matter as much when UCF has the football as opposed to when East Carolina does. So I would pay attention there. Uh, field position, you know, it's kind of a wash. Uh, as far as the defensive field position goes for East Carolina, they're pretty good there. Uh, UCF's offense, not great. Well, East Carolina's offense, not great on field position, and UCF's defense is fantastic. So something to pay attention to there. Um, both of these teams really good at defensive red zone conversion percentage. They don't allow teams to score very often. Uh, they especially don't allow a bunch of touchdowns. UCF is number one in the country in defensive red zone touchdown rate, so that's something to uh, to watch as far as finishing drives, right? Uh, points per scoring opportunity, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, that's that's going to lean UCF for sure. Um, looking at this, yeah, I, I like my number on this. I like UCF uh, minus 9.28. I'm only having to give up five. That's less than a touchdown. I know that ECU fought a Awesome game last week against Memphis. But I think UCF is the significantly better team. I'm going to take UCF to cover the five on the road here. So give me give me the Gus bus. I like that situation there. Next game and the last one on the day. Washington heads to Berkeley to take on Cal. And yikes. Justin Wilcox, what was that? Colorado? Really? And I understand. Like, it's an interim coach. I know how these things go. Dead cap bounce, all that. But, man, that was that was rough. That was just brutal. Washington, uh, this this number is Washington minus 7.5. Uh, the total is 56.5 over at BetUS. 10.30 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. Let's look at the trends. I'm going to pull up the, uh, pull up the stat sheet here. But let's look at the trends. Washington 4-1 against the spread of their last five in Berkeley. 
However, Washington, 1-7 and seven against the spread in their last eight road games. I think they might actually have some road woes here. Uh, they've only had two of them, but they didn't cover e- either of the last two. Uh, and they didn't cover last week at home against Arizona. So, something to pay attention to. They've, they kind of hit a little bit of a wall under Kalen DeBoer. Cal under Justin Wilcox. This is something to pay attention to. You see on the screen that my numbers have Washington favored by nearly 13.5 points. That would be six points of value. I don't think that Cal is the most raucous atmosphere in the world, for sure. But Cal under Justin Wilcox is 16-3 and three against the spread as a touchdown-plus dog in the last 19 games. Like, how does that continue to happen? It just, I, I, I don't understand it, really. Um, but who am I to really go against that? I can break down all of this for you. Um, the biggest thing that you need to pay attention to here, rushing explosiveness. Cal has a dude at running back. Um, and Washington, number 67 in rushing explosiveness allowed. Uh, stuff rate, etc. Like, there's no major advantage for Cal, but I'm telling you, that Washington defense is not good at all. Uh, I think that Cal can take advantage, especially with Plummer at quarterback. Uh, they're number 20 in passing explosiveness. I think they can take advantage of Washington's defense in a major, major way here. On the other side, like the Cal defense is not living up to what we usually expect out of them. So that's something to kind of watch here. Uh, but at the same time, they're on the road might be able to uh, take advantage of some some opportunities. Uh, takeaways per game, Cal is number 14. Well, Washington is only number 14 in giveaways per game. Um, and yet, when they go on the road, I tend to believe that Michael Penix is probably going to throw a pick somewhere. So, something to pay attention to. I'm going to take Cal to cover the 7.5 because the trend is just too ridiculous. Washington on the road and Cal, of course, Wilcox as a touchdown or more underdog. Yeah, there's nothing in here that will really say it, but you look at the explosiveness, you look at, you know, maybe the Cal defense coming around a little bit. I can find ways that this would make sense. I'll say that. I can find ways that it makes sense. So, yeah, give me Cal. Give me Cal to cover seven and a half. So, a little, little bit crazy, but is what it is. If you haven't already, go back and watch the BetUS College Football Show from Tuesday and Wednesday. You can get my best bets over there. But, uh, but yeah, we've gone through. We broke down 12 games. Uh, we're at 52 minutes, so full hour-long show. But it is what it is. Go check out Valtimary Surf Company. That's at valtimarysurfco.com. There's a link in the description. Use the promo code GARY10 for 10% off of your order over there. Along with that, enter in the Winning Cures Everything Picks Contest. You can go to winningcureseverything.com, click on Contest, and enter in right there. It's free. Or you can just click the link in the description. Again, very easy to do. But, uh, but yeah, you get a uh, $25 Amazon gift card if you win for the week. So go ahead and take advantage of that. Um, you can get some other goodies from BetUS as well if you win for the weekly contest. But I will warn you, I mean, there's plenty of people that entered that thing Uh it's not it's not super easy. You gotta pick eleven games against the spread. We'll see how everybody does. Along with that, what else? Oh, BetUS. Yeah, we're powered by BetUS. It's America's premier online sports book. It's where the game begins. Go and check it out, BetUS.com, and check out the BetUS College Football Show. Like I just told you, every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, we have hit ten thousand subscribers. That is awesome. So make sure that you are subscribed over there if you're not already, but we're trying to reach toward the next goal as well. So go ahead and knock that out. With that said, let's get out of here. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. Thank you for constantly supporting the show. Subscribe right here on Winning Cures Everything on the YouTube page. Subscribe to the podcast. All that good stuff. Uh, if you have any questions, etc., you can always reach out to me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. Let's knock this thing out. Y'all take care of yourself, take care of each other, and hopefully... Hopefully, all your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.